All right, so this is going to be a review for Monday, May 2nd. Um, this is a review for the final exam. All right, some of the things that we haven't fully gotten to that may appear on your final exam. Um, this is a phase diagram. And so every phase diagram, no matter what material it is, you're going to have temperature and pressure. And this section over here is going to be solid. Everything inside the Y here, that is a liquid. And everything over here in this section is going to be a gas. Okay? Now, so if I ask you what state of matter A is in, it's a gas. If I ask you what state of matter B is in, it's a solid. How about C? That's a solid. How about D? That's a liquid. Okay. Now, um, if it is on the line, then it's at equilibrium between two states. All right. So, for example, if we were crossing from here to here, all right, we went from a solid to a gas. We call that sublimation. Okay, that's what dry ice does. If we're going this way, we call that deposition. All right. If we're going here, we call that condensation. And if we're going this way, we call that evaporation or vaporizing. Okay. If we're going this way, we call that melting. And if we're going this way, we call that freezing. Okay, so if it's on the line, for example, if we had a dot right here, that dot would be at equilibrium between the solid state and the gaseous state. So anything on the line is a gaseous state, or I'm sorry, is at equilibrium. Okay. Here's the same thing. Uh, this point where they all three meet, that's called the triple point. More on that later. Uh, this is called the critical point. More on that later. Um, chemical equilibrium is the state at which the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So the reactants are becoming products at the same speed that the products are becoming reactants. All right. Le Chatelet, I uh, probably said that wrong. Um, said that if something changes in the reaction, the equilibrium will shift to make it equilibrium again. All right. So, for example, if we have um, H2 plus O2 at equilibrium with H2O, okay, and we add some reactant, let's say we add some extra hydrogen gas, well then it's going to shift and make more water, more H2O, in order to be at um, equilibrium again. Okay. If we add a product, okay, if we add more H2O, then it's going to shift to the left and make more products, or I'm sorry, make more reactants so that it can be at equilibrium. It wants to be at equilibrium. Okay. Um, now, we can do the same thing with removal. If we remove some H2O, if we take it away, we take away some oxygen, then more of the H2O will break down to per replace those lost reactants. Okay? If we remove some product, then more reactants will become products to keep it at equilibrium. Okay? So that's that's equilibrium. And this is a handy dandy little chart 
to uh, remember. Remember, equilibrium just means that it's balanced and the both reactions are happening at the same rate, forwards and backwards. This is a solubility graph. And so what this means is that every point on this line is a saturated solution. So at 20 degrees Celsius, I can dissolve 200 grams of water, I'm sorry, 200 grams of sugar in 100 grams of water. That is the solubility of sugar at 20 degrees, okay? And that gives me a saturated solution, okay? Now, if I dissolve less than 200 grams of sugar at 20 degrees Celsius, uh, I'm sorry, greater than, that is the greater than symbol. If I um, dissolve more than 200 grams of sugar at 20 degrees Celsius, then I have a super saturated solution. It's holding more than it normally would. If I have less than 200 grams, we call that unsaturated. So like if you wanna make fudge, like honest to God from scratch fudge, right? You're gonna start off with some water and you're gonna put a bunch of sugar in it and you're gonna dissolve that sugar at a high temperature, okay? and it's gonna become saturated. Then you're gonna let the water cool a little bit. And as the temperature goes down, instead of being saturated, it's gonna become a super saturated solution. Because look, at 20 degrees, 200 grams is saturated. But if I let this cool down to uh, 10 degrees, then that 200 grams would be a super saturated solution, okay? So by letting a saturated solution at a high temperature cool down to a lower temperature, we can actually make a super saturated solution. All right, and remember group one are the alkaline metals, group two are the alkaline earth metals. Three through 12 are the transition metals. Group 17 is the halogens. Group 18 are the noble gases. On the left, we have the metals in yellow. On the right, we have the nonmetals in blue. And in green, in the middle, on the stair step, we have the metalloids. Okay? Um, and that's it. That is the review uh, for May 2nd, Monday's uh, assignment. Thank you. Have a nice day.